Hi everyone. Today I want to make a video about making a simple techno loop with mainly the OB6. Ever since I bought this synth, people have asked me my way of sequencing it, what's my approach to sound design, basically how I, I make music with it. Because for some reason the OB6 is seen maybe more as a synth wave sound and full of 80s carpenter horror movies sounds and it may not be the first synth you think of when you think of techno. That's also why many people have been asking me why they choose the OB6 over maybe the Prophet 6 or the Ref 2 or other sequential offerings and of course other potential polysynth that are really popular like the Innovation Peak and such and such. Yeah, for some reason I've always wanted a sequential synth. They always appeal to me. I like the looks, I like the build quality and the sound of course. The OB6 is always put next to the Prophet 6. They're more or less the same price, more or less the same features. It boils down to do you prefer the filter of the OB6 or do you prefer the filter of the Prophet 6 and then you can make your choice. But to be honest, I never really compared them and I, I never really considered the Prophet 6 actually. I, I was always set on the OB6 for not any very precise reason. Some friends of mine had the OB6 and told me it was banging, it was a great synth and I trust them. One artist I really, really like called Troy, who has beautiful techno EPs on Clockworks, for example. I know he uses one for pretty much everything and it sounds incredible so I thought if he can do that the sounds are inside the box they are just you need to find them so I definitely knew it was potentially a good buy and it could work with the kind of music I wanted to do like it's definitely possible to make techno with so I bought it and uh, I feel like my friends were even happier than me that I finally bought it because for two years straight I told them I was about to buy a polysynth but never did after like six, maybe six plus years with the Verbo system, I really, really wanted to have more possibilities and, and do something a bit different, different workflow. The module is amazing and I still use it pretty much every day, but it's just two different approaches. And uh, if you wanted chords and pad, uh, the polysynth is the way to go. It's, it's just such a hassle on the modular. I've tried it. Yeah, even if it works, no, it's not, I don't think it was. It's worth investment in time. Yeah, I really wanted to go towards the kind of sounds that it's only a polysynth would allow to do. So I finally caved in and bought one. So I visited it so long that I finally had the money. I would I was dead set on a Pro Ref 2 for a long time, but I came back to my first love and first choice, which was the OB6, which I always had my heart for no, like I said, for no particular reason. I don't really know why. So it finally arrived and then I thought, what do I do with this? How do I sequence it? Um, I, I was thinking I was going to sequence it with my Octatrack. I've tried it and instantly hated it. And I wasn't too surprised, to be honest, because I bought a MIDI to CV module a while ago to, to try sequencing my module with MIDI. I've never done it. I thought, why not? might be helpful for live cases, etc. I hated it too and I probably sent the module like five minutes later. It's even worse for Poly. That's not how my brain works. I have no idea when I'm in front of the, the Octatrack, when I'm about to make a sequence, nothing good comes out. It's just not the way I like to work. It, it's a perfectly capable sequencer for drum machines and stuff like this, but for me, honestly, it's not worth the hassle to, to to sequence a synth and so I thought long and hard about how and what I like when it comes to sequencing and uh, pretty much what I like is the voltage multi-stage the sequencer the DFAM like simple step sequences so I looked at something that would allow me to do this but for polysynth and um, really quite quickly appeared that the only solution was to use a plugin or a VST. And uh, so I found that one called Stepic and that's one of the things we are gonna talk about in that video. Cause it's like it says on the tin, uh, it's a step sequencer, but a very good one and one that allows you to play chords. So let's dive into making a loop. We'll cover a few different things like sound design on this, but then the sound design option you can get into Ableton and then we'll make a simple loop. First of all, let's uh, init this thing with manual and write. 
and then we can maybe start with a sequence so like i was saying my sequence of choice is tepic uh you have to buy it it's like 49 euros or something which uh, is not that expensive given the power of this thing and so that's how it looks so it's a 16 step sequence uh, you have your gates you can toggle on and off here you have the notes with the visual representation you can choose a scale and in that case it will gray out the notes which aren't in the scale um, you have the octave you have another sequencer for the duration velocity swing per step or global and then it disabled the per step a divider and a note repeat these last two i don't really use them they're a bit too much for me but to each their own so i want to keep that uh, sequence to eight steps honestly that's usually fine for me i'm so used like i was saying to the voltage multi stage who has only eight steps that's fine usually the first few thing i do is uh, to randomize a few of these so you have this dice button here yes here you're gonna randomize everything which once again is a bit too much but here you can randomize the gates the nodes the very first thing I do usually is to close down the filter on the OB6 at velocity and then just so that the sound is a bit more bearable. Something like this. Um, so I will usually start making stuff like this. I don't want a busy sequence, so... Let's, let's uh, settle on this for now, it doesn't really matter. Add some resonance, of course, add VCO number two. You can add the sub octave, but when I first got this, I was all about the sub octave. It blew my mind how powerful it is. Just listen to this. And I still occasionally use it, it sounds crazy, but it does take a lot of space in the mix. And um, usually, I find it more practical to have the bass separate than to the lead. So this will most of the time do lead synth and the verbose system or the DFAM will take care of the bass. From mixing perspective, it's much, much easier to have them uh, as two separate channels. Like even for classic bass line, you barely need the sub octave. That thing is so beefy. So you can also engage the velocity for the amp if you want. You don't have to. Just depends where you want to go. And then what's really cool about this is that you can per step do chords. So I know nothing about music basically. So you could just click around until it sounds great to you. I've put the lead in scale here, but alternatively you could uh, choose an alternate scale on the OB6 by hitting t global twice, four, and then you can choose. So if you find that your stuff is a bit too melodic or chromatic sounding, just uh, browse through these. Some really sick tables. Let's go back to the first one just for now. Uh, usually I really like to engage some FM to get some bit, bit of a crazier sound. And then, you know, it's just listening and tweaking. At some point you can bring in your kick drum just to see where your sequence sits relatively to the kick drum. Where the magic lies in that sequencer is the ability to 
randomize steps. So if I want to randomize the gate here, I can. But most of the time I will randomize the velocity, which I think is the key to get sequences that sound cool and alive. Um, and you can restrict the range of the velocity, which is extremely handy. You can do that with everything, pretty much. Uh, swing per step is also pretty cool. To create crazy rhythms. If you want to get more metallic tones, you can engage cross mode a bit everywhere. Add some detune, which is the vintage mode with the new update. Pan spread, which sounds amazing, but doesn't work with everything. You can put some pan spread and then put a utility to restrict the bass and keep the bass in one sp space, but it's also nice in mono, I think. There's always plenty of ways to stereoify that later. Also, I like sometimes to do some LFO on the filter filter mode is sounds nice so with the LFO in sync it's not really sync like division of your clocks it's just re-triggers every time there's a gate coming so it, you can make this really interesting rhythmic sounding stuff stuff like this which doesn't sound crazily good here, but it's better once you add a bit of effect. Here it's a subtle reverb metallic plate from the Eventide Eclipse. If we go to the processing side of it, I really like using the amp on the OB6. It adds a lot of body to the sound and grit. Usually the blues is fine, the other one is just way too extreme. Watch out for the treble and presence, it can get a bit crazy too. Can, can get harsh easily. I like to remove the low end as well because if I'm going to bring some bass later i don't need all that and why not add some delay like the fab field to timeless three especially that part the dynamics uh, which is the compressor it expands or it compresses so here you get the standard delay with some reverb here you get the effect but much more constrained 
Childlike. It's more subtle. Try different trainings, but Some of the processing I like to do on the UB6 as well. I don't go crazy with the processing. The you can put utility base mono if you're feeling like like adding some pan spread. notes to be frank. So another one I discovered not long ago is the vocoder. Sometimes it can sound really nice. It has that kind of basic channel quality, which can be really interesting, I think. Of course, it robs the sound of a lot of frequencies. But if you have a bass line ready, it can be nice. You can get a little groove going. I'm really in love with that velocity thing. Velocity in the modular is not that easy to do. And uh, yeah, that's like presets, velocity, the convenience of MIDI basically, uh, without the hassle, because for some reason, sending MIDI from our ARMY interface into the OB6 works perfectly and I have no latency whatsoever. Here it's even the RE909 that's clocking everything because the RE doesn't really like to receive clocks. So it's a master even of Ableton. So of course it takes like a beat or two to catch up, but then it's fine. You can always, you know, add something. Sounds really strange here. Well, yeah, if you have a blue, it's, it's a tie. So you can make longer notes if you have some sustain. You can hear that it does some effect to the LFO. Um, I like the so tooth waves because it's only positive. The sine wave goes up and down, minus five plus five. This one is like a rhythmic envelope, sort of. I don't really like the distortion on that thing. It doesn't sound great. But the reverb, can be nice at if not used as a like reverb per se but more as a texture and 
like body to the sound. If I want to use a reverb, I'm, I'm going to use a reverb, like a, my even tithe or even a plugin. But they're pretty decent. Even like the, the spring is pretty damn good. Or well, the phases, they're really good too. Let's bring it it's here. If you know a bit of metallic sound, the spring can be nice. Same with the ring modulator. They, they, they have their use, honestly. They're not my go-to, but some, some sounds I've made are re really reliant on the little that the effects add. And here, for example, I think a little room is nice. It adds that kind of stereo image, which is cool. So here we have some vocoding going on. We have timeless free pro Q to remove the bass. You can even go further and side chain it if you want, but it's not too bad here, I think. That's usually the extent of it, really. I don't go too crazy with uh, the processing. Um, of course, I should mention there's the Overstayer and the two Elysia cubes on the master, which help glue and compress and just make it much better, basically. Another really interesting thing with Stepik is that you can nudge back and forth the sequence if you want. So you, you can try a few different reset points basically without much effort. I think it's pretty fun here too. And each, each of these can have their own length. So you can do parametric sequence super easily. You can have eight gates and maybe seven velocity so they will always turn well honestly there's so many options for randomization that sometimes they get too much too quickly so i feel like with just a few maybe two or three randomized elements it's enough to get enough interest because of course you kind of have some other stuff happening, like the drum machine. Maybe you can tweak the filter. So I don't feel the need to automate everything on Stepic. Then of course I haven't spoken about it, but there are eight lanes of automation, which are eight sequencer with 16 steps, their own division. Uh, the sequencer needs to be stopped to map it to CC, but you can map it to CC and uh, do like eight stand eight lanes of automation. But once again, it's sometimes it's just way too much for me. I like I like simple stuff. So I just wanted to make a quick note about making bass lines on the DFAM. It's recently been my go-to for that purpose. I think it's perfectly suited to the role mainly because of the filter, which really closes down pretty much completely. You can get rid of uh, a lot of harmonics. It's pretty sharp. It's not gentle slope as on the OB6. It doesn't have that sizzle. It's big and bold and uh, yeah, 
it perfectly works for baseline. And I find that within this box, within the sequence uh, and the parameters, you can get quite a lot of range within that admittedly small range of sounds. We're talking about rumbly bass lines. So yeah, it's not, it's not like a huge amount of variety you can get there, but I feel like you can get that slow moving, really heavy stuff, like rumbly, then you can also get the propelling forward um, groovy bass line, you can get the percussive stuff with tom-like sounds. There's really a lot you can do, it really just depends on the vibe you want to go for on your track, of course. So yeah, usually I'll use VCO2 like a good chunk of the time because it has FM, so let's bring that up. And here I'm using the slow envelope, I think for baseline, it works better. Usually you want your trenchants to be a bit smoother. This is great for percussive sounds and it's amazing that it's so sharp, but yeah, it's not what we want here. So you have the envelope to the VCF. Like I was saying, if you close everything, there's barely any sound coming out. Then you get a more RPG sound, depending on the decay. You can get super sharp sounds, but once again, that's not really what we're going for. So usually I'll open a bit the decay and then tune that. I have the pitch routed to the VCF mode, so that knob like 90% of the time because I think it works. So the pitch row, the notes, will open more or less the filter. So the higher the note, the more open the filter is. It, it lets the high notes go through. Otherwise, it's just noise routed to the filter, which, as you could just heard, can be quite harsh. So without it, it's like this is just noise. And so you get even less harmonics, I guess. Here there's no FM, so it's basically very similar to the first oscillator. You can also dynamically patch the FM with the velocity. So the velocity yeah, dynamically controls the FM, a bit like on a complex oscillator, except you don't have velocity on a complex oscillator, but you get my point. It's like the mode index, basically, and here I'm using the velocity to control it. So of course it kind of controls volume too. And what I'm doing here doesn't make any sense really because when you're looking for a sub rumble or a bass line, uh, you gotta hear it in context. It's uh, like when you get these sample packs to when you get to that sub rumble folder, they they usually sound like shit or they sound amazing, but then when you try to put them within the mix, there's just not any space left for the rest. So you want to have your bass line working, at least with the kick. You want something, you want a groove, you want something that works, that fills the blank in between the kicks, but doesn't overpower everything. So I'm not saying this is a great bass line, but this may be a start. And another thing I would say is use the the least decay you can get away with really because if it sounds good with the decay 9 then that's fine you don't need to crank it to the max because it's gonna create problems down the line way too much sound you want to keep some space so yeah this could be a baseline depending on the track of course it's pretty dry here there's nothing on the defam ex except everything is running through the overstayer as usual but yeah, usually uh, I, I keep my defam pretty dry, no, no reverb, sometimes some delay, which can enhance a groove or create one, but it can also create problems when you're mixing, so... The rumble, the bass line doesn't have to sound crazily good on its own, it needs to slap within the track. No need to go crazy with the effects. Sometimes like a dry TFAM is all you need. Of course, then if there's a FAM, 
the changes to sound, you can add some pitch. So you can have an envelope to the pitch, negative amount, which creates an insane amount of bass. You can use the resonance to get rid of some, that's a lot here. Which can get what you can be what you're looking for, but it's gonna be again pretty hard to mix. You can go a bit crazy. Usually when you find a good sound, you're opening the filter and you're like, whoa, what's what's this horrible sound? But if it works as a bass line, nobody needs to know how it sounds with the filter opened. You can also use the VCO1 as a classic VCO. It sounds good. Beefy triangle wave going into a nice filter. Depending on the track, it's going to work or not, but... I use the resonance as a sort of EQ, because it's, it's not screaming until you get past the midpoint. Usually here it removes a bit of bass, it's just easier for me. I don't need to use an EQ then. I probably will, but still. You can also just use the pitch to VCO2. And it's gonna be a bit more atonal and heavy. Plenty, plenty, plenty of good bass lines lying around. A lot of the magic happens with the envelope controls. They need careful tweaking. It's not something you're gonna play with live too much. Plus, nobody wants to hear you looking for bass line live. I mean, absolutely nobody. But when you're alone in your studio, you can do that for a few hours. So yeah, that's um, usually how I go with the DFAM to find bass lines. Of course, there's a million other sounds in Kit 2, and when I love using it live, and but I use it more for short percussive stabs and alien type of sounds because it's such a versatile box and the sequence is kind of magic with the velocity, so I, I really like it. So yeah, that was a very dry example, just a kick and a bass line, no effects, but you gotta imagine this within like a loop. You have something you like on the OB6, on the synth, and bring the bass, and it's barely audible, or it's not the thing you notice immediately, but you like bass player, like to say, it's the thing you hear when you remove it, and of course it's true, so. It's gotta have the body, it's gotta propel things forward, but doesn't, have to overpower everything. I don't know, I think the DFAM is quite suited for that role and uh, really love it, but whatever you have is probably perfect as well. So I hope this video gave you a few ideas about how to use your polysynth to make some techno. Maybe you're wondering which polysynth to buy, the Prophet 6, the OB6, or any other available on the market. I can't answer this question for you. I have basically zero experience with polysynths except with the OB6, but I would heavily recommend it. I love it. At least now there's one video on YouTube that showcases making loopy techno with the OB6. I know it's not the kind of music the synth is associated with, but that's mainly how we use it. I've been making a lot of music with it since I got it. It features in one way or another in pretty much every track I've released uh, since I bought it. Some, some of them are entirely OB6, except the drums. Some of them are a mix of the OB6 and the modular. And yeah, I keep exploring the OB6 and you know, at first you're making simple sounds, no FM, and I was just blown away with how great it sounded and how bold. Recently, I've been trying to explore a bit of more sound designy, different sounds. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of those as well. So it's really, really, really not limited to one palette of sound. I think, I think it's a very versatile sense. Maybe the ultimate sound designers want to groove with me because there's only one LFO and of course there's no wavetables blah 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 and I can only agree with them but I think in 
in its own range of course it's, not, it's never going to sound like a, a Waldorf but it's a quite versatile synth more than people might think I believe so it's a beautiful tool heavily recommended I've seen it many many times on stage on with different bands it's a workhorse I think for a lot of people be it like if you're playing uh, psychedelic rock if you're over mono and playing banging tunes and your try and making amazing techno you can you can use it in very 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 different contexts there's an affiliate link to perfect circuit down below if you'd like if you're located in the us and would like to buy an ob6 or dfam then feel free to hit them up it helps me of course and uh, you can also help me by subscribing to my patreon with that said keep it simple have fun see you next one